Toys Optimus Prime. And do you know how I got this one? My bestest friend in the whole world, he done sent it to me for my birthday. Yeah, can you believe that? How awesome is Foo? Yeah. Let's think, uh, super amazingly awesome. And this is awesome just looking at it. It was like, to be honest, before I left Taiwani, um, I saw this in the store and I almost picked it up. But I was like, oh no, I can't afford that. It's too much. Because it's one of those uh, extra curricular toys. Yeah. It's like a toy you want to get, but you really can't afford it. And so I was like, all right, well, it looks cool, but I'll never get it. And then Foo done bought it for me. Oh, man, Foo is amazing. So I'm going to go right here and put some links to Foo. Yeah, here and here and here and here. Yeah, so uh, link to Foo. Subscribe to Foo because Foo is awesome. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm really excited about that. It does look fantastic. I mean, just look at the box art right there. And yeah, I have opened it, and it is pretty amazing. I mean, wow. And it's the Sideshow show Collectible. Uh, wait. Sideshow Exclusive. Oh, Sideshow Exclusive Optimus Prime. Which means it comes with a Starscream Severed Head. Yeah, there's a whole big story about that. But we'll get to that in a minute. So, uh, Handy Hands, if you could just... Turn the box uh, to the back. Because on the sides, it's just got the flaming comets. So, let's just go. Whoa, look at the bottom spin. Wait, we'll just spin the whole bottom right there. All right. And then the back is just all red. With all kinds of things. Optimus Prime, warnings, and all those good things. So, really, not much to see there. So, hold on. Let's get it back. Turn that again. Woohoo! All right. That's kind of cool. So, yeah, that's really, we're just going to have to go and open him up and check him out and see how he is. Because I did see some reviews and people aren't totally happy with him. But, um, yeah, let's just take a look. Because we've got to remember, too, one important thing. This is Hot Toys First Optimus Prime. First Transformer they did. So they're going to do others. Yeah, there's no doubt that they're going to do Megatron. And a Starscream, being that they already did the head and the wings and the guns. Yes, yeah, so they'll definitely do. So it can be a really interesting and cool um, extracurricular toy for us guys. And Foo, thank you, 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 thank you so much. Because it is awesome. And, and man, you are the bestest friend in the world. I, I just can't believe you would send this to me. So really, thank you, thank you, and thank you. So let's get a good look at uh, Optimus Prime. Woohoo! Yeah. And yeah, it's hard to set this all up here in the USA. Yeah, it's much more convenient in Taiwani. And I did notice in the toy stores, what happened, America? And in Taiwani, the, the toy stores seem to be stocked. But here in America, or the USA, um, yeah, what happened to all the toys? There must be a lot of toy collectors out there. All right, let's get to open it up. And thank you, Foo. All right, let's do this. All right, and when you open it up, this is what you see. It's, um, yep, right here. Um, well, you see, Optimus Prime Starscream version. Starscream has long thought that his advanced weaponry could make him the most powerful bot in the universe. He was right. He just isn't around to find out. When Starscream sh suffers a crushing defeat, at the hands of Optimus Prime, yeah, Optimus kind of ripped off his head. Or at least that's what's in the box. Um, yeah, he's having flashbacks to Transformers 3. Um, 
Anyway, the Autobot leader takes the Decepticon Air Commander's weapons and wings. Decepticons, consider yourselves warned with a pair of arm mount no ray cannons and the power of flight Optimus Prime has done made himself the most powerful warrior in the universe. Yeah, and there's casting crew. I, I don't understand that, but there's all the people that worked on the figure, I guess, over there. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, good for them. Man, it's a lot of hard work to make this, so let's go and look and see. All right, when you open it up and uh, remove the plastic that's on top, because there's a plastic on top, there's Optimus Prime, extra pair of hands, the base is underneath, um, and hold on, let's see, where's that, oh, uh, there's Starscream's head right there, I don't know if you're seeing this or not, because for some reason my screen is not showing anything, I don't know what's going on with my camera, I need a new one, and those three dots are where the batteries were, I already put them in, but yep, so this is what it looks like, so now let's take them out and take a look. Alright, and here we have Optimus with his light up eyes turned on. And man, that just looks amazing. I mean, it really is nice. Actually, I like the style that they did it in. It's kind of like a hybrid between realism and um and the cartoon. The G1 cartoon. And it really does look awesome. All the little details that they have. And I love the paint job they did. Things are like rusted and worn. And it looks like he's been sitting on my shelf for a really long time. <laughs> Actually. I mean, but that's awesome. Now, the one thing I really have to say. Bad on you, uh, Hot Toys. And that is the Matrix Chamber. So let's just open it up. And yeah, wow, look, there's a light. And uh, yeah, I'll move the backpack. Hey, it's just this switch here to shut it off. But, uh, yeah, this part is the most disappointing thing I've seen. Because Hot Toys is known for their details. And that just looks really tragic. I mean, it really... It's completely flat. Yeah, they did do some sort of grooving in it, but it's really a flat yeah, design. And doesn't look good. No removable matrix... And, yeah, I think Hot Toys has a ways to go with Transformers. Just based on this. They, they don't, they, they're not there yet. But, that doesn't mean I don't love it. I think it's amazing, but, yeah, I was really disappointed with the Matrix Chamber. Massively. Considering it's been done better in a Transforming toy. So, yeah, I mean, there he is. And Optimus does look great. Let's go and back up a little bit on him. And hold on, I'm using the old style of recording because I do not have my um my thing with me. What's it called? Ah, oh, that thing that you use to take pictures with. The tripod. That's right, so I'm just using stacked books right now. So yeah, I'm really going old school on this one. So, yeah, there is Optimus right there. And, hold on, I'm just going to try to put it steady just so you get a full body look. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do it side there, hand hands. Yeah, I mean, the side, the back here. And, I mean, it really does look amazing. And he does have this uh, backpack over here, which just goes and attaches... Slides right in. It's real easy. And it does look pretty cool right there. I do like that. It looks like the tires are there. It's a very cool look. Like I said, I love the design work on it. I like the design of this Prime. But they haven't gotten their rhythm with Transformers. Which you wouldn't expect on the first one. Even though I think everybody sees Hot Toys. And you just expect, you know, amazement. So hold on. Let me go and add on the star screen parts and we'll take a look at that. Alright, and here is Prime all decked out on the stand he came with. Um, that little piece in the back that's supposed to hold him, it's just, I'll show it later, it's just like a little piece of plastic and you kind of hang them by it. 
Yeah, but really you gotta put the feet in there. Yeah, it doesn't really... <laughs> you're doing a balancing act with it. But the results, I mean, look at that. It looks like a statue. I mean, it's pretty phenomenal looking. I mean, yeah, I don't like the fact that Prime kills Starscream, especially when he looks very G1-y. Because, you know, Prime would never do that. The G1. I do like the wires hanging out. Originally, I thought it was from Megatron's master plan when Starscream disguised himself as Prime and you could swap out the heads, but no. That's just, you know, Prime ripped Starscream's head off. Poor Starscream. But adding on the parts, yeah, the details on these parts are absolutely amazing. And they look fantastic. I and mean, I will turn them around so we can see the back. But I just want to, like, just setting it up, the way it looks, the stand. I mean, it does look like a statue. And there's his other hand, the gun holding hand right there. I mean, when you see it, it is really... I mean, if you just saw it on a shelf and you didn't know what it was, you would just think it was a statue. It looks that fantastic. I mean, really does. This is where Hot Toys excels on making figures look awesome. I And it does. Let me just see if I can turn it. Can I turn Prime around? We will see. Hold on. Yeah, everything else is flipping around. But what I want to turn. Alright. And there's the base. See, that's that's basically what is supposed to hold him. You're supposed to balance him on that, but there's it's just one slice. It's like not two. Like usually the hot toys, I don't know, goes between the crotch, they hang on them, and it works beautifully. And just look at this back. I mean, oh, that does look incredible. I mean, the details are outstanding. I mean, just all the way there, back of the stand. I mean, just all the way around, Prime looks absolutely amazing. When I do the articulation, I will remove all this stuff. Yeah, just because I'm sure this would hinder some of his movements. And his cannons can be, you know, the null rays can be shoulder mounted or they can be on the arm. And uh, one thing is you have to remove inside the, sh the arm. Um, there is, or that piece there, and I can't find it. There's a little piece of soft rubber protector that you put on for the arm, but if you put it on the cannon, you, uh, on the cannon, on the shoulder, you have to remove it. So if you see on the arm, yeah, he's got that black in there, but the shoulder is just right on there. So yeah, I mean, very, very cool, very fantastic looking. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to show him in a nice pose, cause I mean, that's what it is. I think a lot of people are just expecting, oh, transformer, that don't transform. But actually, it's it's not for that. It's it's a display figure. So uh, yeah, let's get to the articulation, and this is where he fails. So uh, yeah, let's get to that. All right. So here we go. Here's we got Pram and articulation. Now this is where I think the figure really fails in a big way. And there's a lot of great stuff in it, but uh, yeah, right from the beginning, this is looking up. Now, yeah, you can tilt the body, but I mean, the head movement is, okay, this is down, and you have a point to push back here that goes back, but going back, and I'm not going to try to break the toy because there's electronics there, but I have tried to push pretty hard, and no, it doesn't go back. So, uh, yeah, he does have a little side-to-side -side motion, which is good, but again, yeah, I'm just expecting more. He's got 360 this way. But really, hardly any looking up motion. Now, shoulders are excellent. I do like these shoulders because they actually go down. They go up. Put the arm. I mean, what's awesome is this part here moves so that you can get the arm straight out like that. I mean, this is really nice ratchets on it. You're getting 360. This part also pulls out this way. 
fantastic range of motion there. The shoulder, yep, yeah, he's got he's got a 360 there. 90 degree elbow. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. But you got 90 degrees. I was just thought it'd be a little more being a hot toy and all. Um, the wrist is excellent. You know, you got 360, you've got all kinds of sway in it. Yeah, it's fantastic. And this hand, the uh, articulated hand, fantastic. The thumb has two joints in it. Each finger has one, two, three. Well, you got one bend here, one bend here, and then the bend for the tip of the finger. Really fantastic. Doesn't have sway side to side, but yeah, you've got pretty nice articulation here. We're pretty fantastic. I don't think it gets much better. And I'm sure this is coming from what they learned on uh, Iron Man. But yeah, that's pretty awesome. Thumbs up. Alright. But uh, then we have what I think is really good is the chest. Because we have a nice sway. You know, side to side here. Fantastic. Here you go. All the way here, all the way here. That's awesome. I mean, that is really fantastic. When we go down to the crunch, if you push in this, yeah, you're getting a really massive ab crunch right there. Fantastic again. And of course, going back, I need you to even be able to put your finger in there. He's going so far back, which again is good. Um... The hips are nice the way they did them. So he's got a little bit of sway. You know, so you can actually use a little bit of twist here. And there's twist up here. So you got two points of twist. I'm surprised it wasn't... I mean, it's really good, but I'm really actually surprised that it's not... Um, there wasn't this middle part for the twist. But, uh, yeah, they compensate really well with it, so I'm not going to complain too much about it. Um, hips, yeah, they did a good job. This goes up, this goes down. Um, on the, underneath the hip, yeah, he's got a rotation here. You're able to go pretty forward with this. Pretty far back there. You got a knee that's 90 degrees. Yeah, that's the knee right there. So it's actually two clicks. Here's as far as it goes with it, and the clicks bring it to 90 degrees. But, shockingly, there is, and this really shocked me, there is no knee swivel. And that is really, really shocking to me. For his leg, you have a little bit of sway here. A little bit. Goes forward, lots of tilt, the heel moves. The toe moves, yeah. So you're getting a lot there. But no no rotation on it. This is another one that's just like, what? You don't have a knee and then no rotation here? Yeah, so it's really the lower body that loses a lot of articulation. And when you first stand him, he's not like an instant, okay, he stands. Many times you have to balance him out. You have to mess with the heels. Now he will stand just fine. But you have to mess with him sometimes a bit. Yeah. And he seems like he's back heavy. Which, when you put the wings on, he's even more back heavy. So there are some detractions. Of it. Oh, and this is a gun hand. His gun hand, his trigger finger, it's kind of really static right there. Yeah. There, there's no real movement here on the gun hand. So you just slide the gun in here. And there you go. But the articulated hand, you got a lot. The gun hand is just kind of, okay, I'm a gun hand. That's it. So, yeah, I'm disappointed with some of the stuff. Missing this little bit of articulation, the head not looking up, no knee, no foot. You know, and little things that are on Transformers, which is like, I expected these vents to move. They don't. The wheels to spin. They don't. It's just kind of like little things that are on the, you know, regular Transformers aren't here. And it's the a fantastic paint job. Amazing paint job. But here is, you know, of course I said it before, the chest. The Matrix chest was so... I was just looking forward to it. Hold on, let me move up the shoulder. 
And, you know, when you get to it, it's really, you know, on a standard figure, you end up with more details. So, yeah, there are, Hot Toys has a little bit to go on, on these guys. But, yeah, it's articulation that kind of fails on Prime. And it's little stuff. It's the little stuff. They got so many things right. And the little stuff they miss. So, uh... Yeah, let's get to the summation. I will say, best birthday present ever. Yeah, that's a... I gotta admit that. But, uh, yep, let's go to summation. Alright, time for the summation. So what do I think about Hot Toys, Starscream, Optimus Prime. Oh man, it is amazing. Absolutely amazing, amazing figure. I love it. And it's the best birthday present ever. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Foo. I, mean, I am just really impressed with this figure. That being said, it is not for everyone. I want to make that clear because, yeah, it looks amazing and fantastic, but it's not for everybody. I, I'm, I'm keen on that. Because, wow, when you're putting down, like, over $300 for a figure, yeah. It's not like, oh yeah, sure, I'll do that. No, it's a lot of money that goes into it. This is the high-end pool of collecting, which is dangerous. Yeah, because you get into that, and then next thing you know, uh, you're living in a cardboard box with a lot of Transformers around you and a lot of super high-priced toys and probably loving it. Maybe you can make your house out of Hot Toys boxes, and then you could live in them. Oh, that's an idea. Oh, wait, wait, never mind. That's not a good idea. But, uh, really, this figure is amazing, but it also has a huge price tag. And, you know, if you go in thinking this is going to be the most amazing Optimus Prime ever, no. No, it's not, because Optimus is a Transformer. He changes from one thing to another. You know, and you're going to go in going, Wow, I love Optimus. This is Optimus. And when he doesn't transform, you're going to go, Wait a minute, but he doesn't transform. And he doesn't have that knee articulation. And his foot doesn't swivel around. And wait a minute, there's the matrix chamber doesn't look as detailed as it normally does. Yeah, you're going to be hit with all those things. And then you're going to start to regret the figure. Now, for me, if I bought this figure... I would love it. Yeah, even if I spent my own money, I would love it. But I'm kind of a crazy collector. Yeah, you can probably tell from the fact that I eat my toys and play with puppets. Yeah. So, uh, you have to know what you're getting into. Don't, don't like, sell a bunch of figures just to get this one. Because then I think you're going to regret it. Because you'll be like, oh man, I wish I had XYZ back. Yeah, he's nice, but... Right. The only way to get this guy is if you can afford him, which is a tough thing. Because he's expensive. He's amazing. But also, can you afford him? That's the question. That's the problem with Hot Toys. I would love to buy every Hot Toy that came out. But they're way out of my league of, uh, yeah, buying things. So, yeah, I'm not doing that. But this one was a gift from my bestest friend. And it is nice. It is shiny. It is good. And this is just the preview of what Hot Toys has in store for Transformers collectors. You know a Megatron is coming. And what I'm really hoping for is a Galvatron and a Rodimus. I really want a good Rodimus figure. I don't care if he don't transform. I just want a good Rodimus. And so I'm hoping for that. So Hot Toys, Rodimus Prime, you have my money. Yeah, because I love Rodimus Prime. Even though he really hasn't had the figure he deserved yet. Yeah. I did not like the masterpiece Rodimus. But, for Optimus, is he nice? Yes, he is nice. Is he shiny? Oh man, is this figure shiny. And is it good? Yes, it is good. It is nice. It is shiny. It is good. Which leads to one more question. Is Felsbug crazy enough to eat a Hot Toys Optimus Prime? Well... If you knows me, you know I would never, ever, ever not hate a figure. 
nice, shiny, good, and I think I'm gonna. Oh, 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 oh man. Oh, oh man. Is that your elbow? Yeah, I think it was an elbow. Hey, hey, stay out of my way. Don't pull me off a prime. Oh man. That is savory. Savory. It is nice. It is shiny. It is good. And I think I might have a hot toys addiction now. Was this your plan, Foo? Because if it was, it's a pretty awesome plan. Uh, I think I gotta get back to eating. So it's nice, shiny, and good. Good toy. Good toy. And thank you, Foo. Best birthday present ever. Oh man. Back to eating. Ah, mm, mm, don't pull me off. Mm, it's mine. Oh man. Stay away, hand hands. Mm, you can't see Prime now. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, oh, that is so good. Oh, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to just rest right here. Oh. When, when's the next uh, Hot Toys Transformer coming out? I, I think I'll start seeing my pennies now. Nice, shiny, and good. Uh, bye!